Hello everybody, welcome to the artclasses.com Patreon paint over critique feedback video. Every week I will pick an artwork from my Patreon page. If you are my patron on patreon.com slash Tara, you can go click on the right corner and then you go to my page. If you pledge uh, each month uh, you get you know other than getting this video tutorial uh, this month you get six to eight uh, from it depends on your level you one get one drawing video and then and so on just go read there level two get two level three get three level four get four level five get all of them so um but if you're my patron at any level from one to five you can post an artwork there and i will randomly pick one of the artwork uh, especially if you haven't got critique or paint over then you get uh paint over uh, and chances are i don't have a lot of patreon at the moment so chances are if you post you become a patron you will most likely get the pain over but if you want a uh, critique and pain over every week you might as well take my class and you know getting over with it and and so you can get a feedback and pain over every week so that's class that's separate from patron so i hope that's not confusing but if you're my patron at any level you can post artwork and i'll randomly pick it so this week i picked this one um assuming i'm not sure this poly is an outwardly thing and then I just kind of rearrange the composition. I'll explain it in the video paint over and then I'll explain it to you like how I change certain things and why and what you could do to improve your uh, painting or drawing. So anyways, let's get started. Well, if you want your uh, critique and paint over, you can go to my Patreon and just pledge uh, on any level, level one. No one only get like one drawing video per term. So um, every month I will pick a few uh, image and paint over uh, and do some critique. So it's just random. The more you post, the more you, you get. But if, or you can also, and also Patreon on all level will get a um, tutorial. Uh, the more, the higher the level, like this one's on level five, you get a uh, landscape. Level 3 will get character design and character painting and level 4 will get uh, character painting in pose and different uh, illustration. Uh, level 5 will get sort of like a more environment. Um, but on level 2 you get kind of lesson, you know, now we're up to lesson 9 so this term will be lesson 10 uh, on the basic uh, foundation of painting. And you can also take my class either digital painting 101 or portrait 101 character design is coming up and uh, or you can take 101 this is a group class uh, portrait and digital painting the group class we have about like five people usually and um, everybody get uh, paint over and feedback um, I try to get to everyone within uh, an hour and then you have a one-on-one -on -one course which for sure you get feedback for you know 30 30 minutes to 45 minutes for each session and depends on how many weeks you go all right, well, let's get started. All right, so um, first couple of things I spot right off the bat. Well, let's talk about good part first. Um, the good part is that you have sensor scale, which is good. Uh, you have the bigger ones in the front, and then as it gets smaller and smaller, it go to the horizontal line, which is good. But if you really want to measure the person and how far it is, you have to kind of draw this out, pick the horizontal line, and then go all the way there. So you got a better sense of scale, like more accurate. And this dude's probably way too small in comparison to the dude over here. Um, this, the distance that go from, say, if he's standing, he's probably be much taller. So uh, even though you have a pretty um, even though you try to have a uh, scale then the scale measuring wise is not as accurate because um, if he was standing he would be this high right so or maybe a little more um, let's see ankle is probably that much probably add that much then this dude height would have been about well if I were from the heels, it would have been this this tall. And if you move that, 
well that's just approximately kind of close a uh, little bit need to be a little bit higher or taller all right so good thing you have sensor scale and I see that you arrange the value nicely from uh, closer it's dark and then as it go further it's get lighter uh, nice sense of mountain there so you can see the mountain range read really well so foreground um, the closer mountain and the further away mountain so that's nice all right so now we're gonna get to the part that you need to fix first composition is really really important you do not want to put anything in the middle mostly in painting uh, because you want people to look around for uh, lots of things what you're gonna put in your painting so there you break this into one two three and then one two three and it's called rule of third uh, and then within this part of the intersection you can set whatever you want your focal point to be on this point you can refer back to uh, there's a video on composition on my channel you can go take a look at that and it will explain to you why is it there and why does it need to be there also uh, once you set all this character onto this composition point you have a lot of space here which is not used for anything else and also if you have the the strokes also before well, we should, uh, I'm just gonna mention it now but I'll probably talk about it later if it's uh, closer to us the stroke and the texture poly the stroke has to be bigger uh, it can be even otherwise it look like uh, 2d dimensional and as it go further away it will be less detail it will be more detail in the front so that is a pretty quick glance and now we are going to start painting over first I am going to rearrange the composition uh, and I'll probably get rid of this area in the front here all right so first uh, I am going to try to find a new composition but it should fit within whatever you have already in there so I'm not gonna change much but from what I've seen instead of vertical format I would change it to horizontal format and then I would uh, I'm gonna cut this character out and rearrange it so I'm gonna move him to the bottom left corner bottom left corner uh, wait and I'm going to hmm, I'm trying to get the lasso tool out of but uh, it somehow gets stuck all right so now I'm going to crop this and make him a uh, frame and then I'm going to have to re so I'm just invert the selection and fill in black so I got the frame there so now it's already look a little bit better with just framing so framing is really important you all should learn how to do that and then um, learn how to get the composition so just go to my channel and look for the video on composition and it will explain to you what uh, need to be done in the composition so once I reframe this I will have to rearrange all these uh, rule of third line um, and then I'm gonna focusing on maybe the, the top left or the bottom left uh, most likely it's gonna be more like a bottom left um, now I'm gonna resize this I'm cutting the character the main character out and the little dude they are two separate out and again I'm not sure what story you're trying to tell but you have when you're trying to make an illustration you should have a, a, a clear message of what's going on why are those guys there you without having to explain it and that's why this picture like picture worth more than a thousand words so you should have your image tell uh, most likely story without having to have any word accompany it right so think about you know when you spread those guys out you don't know those guys are you know friend or foe or whatever they're doing so I'm just gonna change it and maybe and also the character design is a little bit inconsistent uh, you have like a metal helmet and then the rest of them are just like a cloth wrap somehow and doesn't really fit so I'm gonna change that too also I'm rearranging the I don't know the moon the sun the planet some kind of uh, maybe I'm just gonna assume that this is on Mars or on some kind of an alien planet 
and then I move the moon to the, the left side because it's too center. Every if you have anything anything big in the center, it's not quite good because human naturally uh, you will look if you look at the square you look right to the center. You look at anything you look right at the bullseye and that's how we program. So the reason we make the composition the way it is because you want your eye to wander around instead of putting something in the middle because when you eye when your eyes locked into the middle you would not uh, chances are you will not look anywhere around it and that's why you move your subject to the outside to, so that you can okay so I uh, got off the topic there so now I'm using an overlay and put it to blue um, and I'm gonna change all the color scheme here because yours a little too uh, I couldn't tell what color it is maybe purple um, but it's really desaturated and then I use a uh, level to lighten up your scene a bit because it's slightly on the darkest dark is way too dark um, the overall value you should not have anything below 20 you 20 percent but you could on the smaller spot on the big spot you shouldn't go any lower than 20 unless you're inking if you're inking there's a totally different thing but painting wise if you have like a big blotch of paint you shouldn't have anything below 20 uh, usually I prefer it that way because you save the extreme value for um, the more important point like um, more important shadow like occlusion shadow or some uh, because when you put extreme value your eyes gonna go there and uh, it usually draws the eyes like extreme white or extreme extreme light or extreme dark now I'm just uh, painting a silhouette 25% blue um, just for the character and make it on the top layer so now I change the color scheme a bit and it looked a little bit too monochromatic for me so I'm just gonna fix it later because I don't want it to be just blue now I'm just gonna f add a little more orange which is this um, this way we're giving it a little bit complementary color so the light reflecting from that uh, planet or that moon and bounce it over the moon and shooting down to the uh, the ground so you got that um, yellow reflection light so now I'm going to the bottom layer which is the layer that you paint itself and cleaning up the sky a little bit and making the horizontal line a little more uh, visible I mean you already have the horizontal line which is good but now I'm just cleaning it up a little bit so it looks a little bit more um, readable and kind of go along with the horizontal area so there all right and I, I paint it under those colors so uh, one thing is if you put some overlay or some modifier layer on top of something you if you want to go back and paint below it you can have to turn all that off because otherwise you're going to be picking the wrong color or the wrong value uh, if you paint on top it's fine you can just leave it there but if you paint on the bottom layer like what I'm doing here um, I'm just going to have to turn it off so I can pick the original color that it was there right now I'm just rearranging the value and cleaning up the sky so I don't need to uh, paint with color yet but later on when I start painting on the top I will start painting with color so now I'm just gonna rearrange the mountain so I'm just gonna have the far out mountain um, being the value is about 50% which is kind of medium uh, since it's at night so you know or in, in the evening so everything's gonna be a little bit toward the darker end of the spectrum and now I'm gonna make another one which is 62 this mountain is gonna be behind it just a little bit lighter but it still gonna have to be darker than the color of the sky or the, the light that came from the horizontal line and the horizontal line usually will be the, the, the lightest area of the image unless you specify otherwise with some highlight on the character or some highlight lighting on the particular spot in the front but in the overall scheme um, horizontal line will usually be the lightest part most of the time in the landscape like if you look at landscape photography you will see that you know when you look at the horizon um, you see the lightest part which it will be along the horizon so now I'm adding you see this level of those uh, mountain I'm not gonna add too much detail on those mountain uh, if I'm trying to finish the painting I probably would go in and add a little bit of light and shadow but uh, since it's just a paint over I just want to show you uh, just want to get a point across and now I'm gonna paint the ground which is further away will be a little bit lighter and the reason is lighter than the mountain because we receive the light and the mountain some part of the mountain since it's vertical it's gonna receive some of the shadow so usually it will get darker than the uh, floor 
especially if it's laying flat on the ground then you get more light than the side of the mountain so the side way of the mountain get shadow that's why the mountain usually get darker sometimes it could be just the local color itself which is the color of the rock or the color of the tree uh, local color or local value is also um, have a very important role in assigning the value so now as you see as it comes closer and closer it's going to get darker and darker there and now i'm turning everything back on and I'm going to start painting a little bit of color from the sky and this is a normal speed so well if you see me paint live you will notice that I usually paint kind of fast um, if you want to slow down at some point you can press pause uh, when I'm painting I'm pretty spontaneous so I need to I can't just kind of stop and um, doing things maybe I'll, I'll only stop when I'm thinking but at this point just uh, spontaneous I turn the layer on and off pretty quick to see you know sometimes to compare things but uh, you still have any question you can just you know I'd live stream Monday Wednesday Friday at 12 p.m. Pacific time on my channel and then um, Tuesday and Thursday at night 9 p.m. and um, I got a lot of email requests to making a weekend class for just like maybe a workshop for like a couple hours or one hours and I might do that so I'm just gonna maybe put it up today or something a uh, detail about the class maybe just uh, paint over for a student just one class so it's not gonna be like course like five week or eight weeks because uh, a lot of you email me and asking me about that and also if you um, I don't only paint I also draw <laughs> so <laughs> there's a a lot of email that I receive like hey do you have like a drawing class or something I do have drawing class except that it's not really a good class but if we do it on the weekends which is one hour then uh, you might have uh, uh, also a drawing and painting together so now I'm adding a little more silhouette there and also the lighting will be a little more toward the orange since there's an orange uh, color from there and I just turn the layer on and off so I can see uh, what arrangement you have or what the new arrangement that I have there and trying to scale these things and silhouette or the shape of the body is really important for the character so now I'm, if you notice the value uh, the closer it is it gets slightly darker and the further away it is it gets slightly lighter and also the light will become will ha it will have more light on the right side or that side of the figure or you know from the um, toward the, the middle part the light come from the middle so the figure gonna get the light the figure on the right side of the screen will get the light from the left side of the screen and the figure on the right side the big figure here on the left side of the screen will get the light from the right side of the screen more so just think of the lights kind of coming from horizontal in the middle and then when it's just gonna spread out onto the left and onto the right right so now since your foreground didn't have anything at all uh, just one rock standing there I think it's a little bit um, empty so I'm just gonna add some sort of rock formation in the foreground um, maybe some hidden cave or something that because you have a bunch of mountain in the back so it most likely you have a little bit of maybe some rock formation or some hill in the front also and then I'm just gonna use uh, selection tool, uh, paint some texture on it and again um, you have to realize which way the light is coming from so uh, if the rock is on the right side of the screen the light will come from the left side because it kind of shoot through the middle so we call this like basically backlit uh, scene uh, most likely so you're not going to get a lot of lighting or there won't be a lot of detail but uh, more so on the around the edge of the character or the edge of the rock uh, in the evening you probably will get to see more but at night you probably will just see the edge and if the light directly came behind you then you won't see much at all so it's a little tricky when you move it to the slightly to the left or slightly to the right from behind you get to see more or less it depends on the degree of the light and depends on the angle of the light so now I'm trying to add a little bit more detail to the rock but then I probably would spend too much time on painting rock so I'm just gonna give it a hint to get the point across of which way is a light which way is a shadow so it's more like 
uh, underpainting or speed painting, whatever you might call it. Just really quick mock-up. Uh, this is not going to be a finished illustration by any means, so it will not be perfect, but it will get the point across. If you want to see the full tutorial illustration that kind of more refined, then you can go to my website at theartclass.com and download those. So this paint over basically just to try, try to get the point across what color you should improve on. This uh, you could use a little bit more color from the horizon using a little bit of orange. And most of what you did already, the value, uh, you kind of have an idea, a good idea of, of arranging the value. So just keep pushing that a little further and think about how the this value will affect the character also, which light is coming. So most of the most of the character will be covered by the shadow. And even if it's in the shadow, it doesn't mean that it can't have detail. It could. So you're going to receive a little bit of light in the dark because those are the light that bounce in the shadow. So you could still see a little bit of detail. So as you can see, what um, I'm painting here is basically the light that coming from those uh, horizontal line or the sky and I'm adding a little bit of shadow on the side and occlusion shadow on the leg so I'm changing the pose a little bit because uh, you probably want to if you just disco or something you probably would not like just sit there right uh, you probably just crouch, crouching and kind of sitting around and I'm going to change it into like some more of a spacesuit instead of because you have the kind of like a space helmet or but it's look a little more like a uh, G Force or Gacha Man, but I'm gonna change it to the whole, um, what do you call that, uh, astronaut helmet sort of suit. So it's not gonna be, um, it's not for fighting. It's probably for exploring. So I'm not gonna have a lot of, um, just gonna be simple design basically. I'm not gonna have some fancy design helmet or something like that. That's gonna take quite some time. But you look at the lighting there. Just notice where the light should be coming from. Think about the plane. The light on the helmet. Uh, the helmet is a sphere shape, so the light will round, round about a little bit more, since it's gonna kind of curve into the front. So you're just gonna get more leeway to the light. And on the arms, a little bit more cylindrical, so you can get that light from the uh, mock-up that I paint on the lighter part there, and it's gonna round inside a little bit more. And then on the front side, you probably won't get that much light, and you're probably gonna get a lot of shadow. And I think. Uh, the light I just put there on the ear part or on the side is a little bit too much. Uh, I eventually I will um, make it slightly darker because it's a little bit too light. And most of the body will be in the mid tone and dark. Well, darker than the mid tone. Uh, just look at I'm just painting the light on the outer side of the silhouette basically, or wherever that I indi indicate the lighting should be uh, lit, right? So now. Um, more light there. I'm going to try to get as much done as I can. On the shadow, and I'm going to add some gear, maybe some, you know, some wrist monitor, um, something that I think the explorer or the astronaut would have. Um, you might want to look at some if you don't know what as astronaut suit look like. Look at uh, the real design of NASA or you know, maybe some communication backpack there. You're gonna need that. Um, yeah, I'm not really sure what um, he is doing, so I'm just assuming, right? But hopefully this will get the point across. And then add a little bit more detail. And you can see a lot of it are limited value inside the shadow. So I don't try to get more value and add them in. or um, Because if you use more value than what's already there, uh, you're going to change the whole uh, lighting scheme completely. And you do not want that. And on the silhouette, it still looks a little too stubby for me. And... Uh, I think you do it just a little skinny or I don't know if it's a girl so I'm just gonna make uh, a new silhouette here and merge uh, I merge with a pen down so now it's on one layer use a little bit of dodge to dodge the light on the helmet a little bit so the character stand out a bit more um, I exaggerate it a bit the lighting it should I mean in reality you could make it you know you want it to um, be correct then you're gonna have to have a little less light um, but I try to 
you know make it pop so I just dot it a little bit so that it would stand out a little bit more even though it's already stand out maybe I'll tone it down a little later now I just want to uh, repaint the silhouette here it's just gonna take a while I'm gonna make the dude skinnier or her skinnier I'm not sure what it is because uh, you have them skinny so I'm just gonna make the whole thing skinny and put them in a slightly uh, more animated pose all right and then everything is still in shadow and I use texture brush to help a little bit and since the light is coming that way you're gonna cast a shadow uh, your shadow is coming forward maybe a little bit via right side of the screen and trying to rearrange the lighting a bit more on the body um, maybe the helmet need to be smaller since now the body is kind of really small so and more light onto that and if you notice the light that are lit by the light from the back is a lot brighter than what I'm trying to render inside his body there I mean it's light but it's in comparison to the light that coming from the side or the backlit is a lot less now I'm adding a little bit more, more light on her, on his thigh some light coming across from the back maybe that's a little too bright there so this pilot is probably gonna take me a while to fix and then um, this antenna need to be skinnier so I'm gonna erase it first and then adding a light layer in a little bit so clean this up bringing the leg a little more forward yeah this dude takes slightly longer than I anticipated so um, trying to find the light maybe add a little bit more mid-tone there it's not really a mid-tone though, it's still like 25% darkness, uh, brightness so it's still pretty dark but the reason it's look, it looks light in this image because its value and color is relative so whatever you're surrounding it with um, if you have a really bright color right next to it, it will look absolutely dark but since the color around it are pretty close to um, the value within the figure or this character then it looks uh, like a mid-tone rather than dark but if you use a full spectrum then definitely this whole thing will look really dark because um, the pain in here other than the rim the light that coming on the side it's basically below 30 percent and see even I use like 50 percent to paint on this on the edges there it looks a lot brighter than it would look if you paint it on a normal 50 percent background so now reshaping this silhouette here trying to look make it look a little more toward the realis realistic uh, figure a little bit of light bounce I mean reflection and also material is important glass or metal or anything that can bounce the light will have more contrast so if you notice the helmet and on a knee pad or something will have more um, will we'll have more highlight because of the nature of the material so now they uh, I think he or she is holding some necklace or something with red and I decided to put on red because if you look at it it make it sort of pop out from the whole scene and it's the color that doesn't belong to it it's kind of close to the color of the light that comes to the back but and now a little bit of light reflecting on the knees just a little bit don't do too much um, because it's it's not glowing it's just bouncing off and since it's uh, some kind of crystal uh, it should have the ability to uh, reflect the refract or reflect the light a little bit of light on the chest uh, maybe a light coming across to the other arm there forearm since the light is coming in the middle so it, it, it would not be in the complete dark alright so now the figure is almost there I'm about to run out of time so um, I gotta erase those antenna <laughs> and my computer is telling me to download something it's like no I'm working <laughs> I think it should know like when you're working so it should not like pop up and interrupt with you while you're doing things 
and thinner antenna look more realistic so I add thinner and some light on top part on the top face of that backpack all right we almost there so uh, it's about a little over 20 minutes I'm gonna use multiply to add shadow and the shadow should cast toward us since the lights come from the back then um, going to add a little bit of color on the uniform just to give it maybe some mark, some flag or some kind of pattern just to make it not so not too monochromatic even though it's not a finished painting as still you know you can um, bring it up a, a knot by just adding the color that fit right into the scheme and I picked the yellow because uh, or orange because the rest of the detail are blue but if you notice the value is really really like I paint that opac low opacity so it kind of will blend into the color that it's already exists there so I have just a little bit of color there to make it more noticeable now I'm just gonna go fix this figure a little bit so I'm gonna uh, painting on the wrong layer so we got to go back to that layer so it's on this layer here I'm just gonna clean it up and give it some motion um, figure motion walking toward us so the legs that coming forward and the arm so that if you have left left legs coming forward then your right arm will be forward if you have your right arm coming forward if you have your right leg coming forward then the opposite side will come forward that's a motion walking motion running motion similar there so now I try to make this figure look like it's walking a smaller head there so now you can see a little bit of motion there and gesture and pose are really important and the more subtle the better you don't have to have a lot of action pose it's fine uh, you don't need everything to be in action all the time it could be subtle but it should convey what the character is doing and then the other arm yeah basically it's just gonna erase and make it shape like silhouette is really I can't stretch it, stretch it enough how important it is See, I didn't have to do much or adding much detail. Uh, just the shape of it, the form of it, the way the light hits on it, um, it can tell a lot and it creating uh, form even though I don't have to go in and render it that much. It's just two value. And now I add a little bit. The third value is going to be uh, the kind of really highlight value, basically, because some part of it are, are middle. And then um, there we go maybe some antenna on the back for communication and yeah it doesn't have anything in it but you can tell what it's doing uh, even though it doesn't have that much detail and that's why silhouette is important so if you get a nice silhouette good silhouette accurate silhouette you don't have to do much you just add a little bit of necessity you know like a little bit of light to uh, bring stuff forward or a shadow to push stuff backward um, something like that then it will be fine and then add a little bit of shadow shadow might be a little too long I'll fix it a little bit later and the shadow will be darker as it closer to so I'm going to move it to have it because the light is coming from the back right but it's shooting over on the angle so I will make the shadows uh, leaning toward the right side of the screen a little bit in the opposite to the character in the front because the light is coming from the middle and then I'm gonna do the same thing to the other silhouette there but I'm probably gonna not add as, as much detail since it's further away and also I'm running out of time so I can't do much and it's another silhouette to this guy here and maybe I should move them a little closer because that uh, doesn't look that far enough because the shadow fall too short and too close to the uh, foreground so so now I make a silhouette there all right and I'm trying to find whatever that line is it's probably some access paint from some layer on top maybe there we go 
found that layer I'm just gonna erase it there now it looks clean um, almost that it's a long way to go if you're gonna try to make this a an illustration or finished painting yeah, I'm gonna lighten that those guys a little bit more so the lighting coming from the middle has yeah, some light but it's kind of a little bit it blending into the mountain a little bit so I'm just gonna make it slightly lighter so that it could stand out from those mountain oops and I paint on the wrong layer so I'm just gonna cut it and move it to the layer that have this dude on and merge it down I'm gonna maybe dodge it a little bit for the quick painting but then it's too bright so now I'm just gonna dodge slightly tiny little part so it would stand out otherwise it would kind of blend into the background and you don't want that and if you're gonna if I'm going to finish this painting then I'll probably go into the background and do some tweaking and changing the value a little um, so that the character would stand out and add some shadow for those two guys also there all right so um, maybe I'll make it slightly bigger so they look a lot closer because just like they probably want to come and see what's going on and then move the shadow behind all of them and move this lower move the shadow all right we almost done here and again um, if you want feedback or paint over you can just register for my class and I will have a new class which you guys request like workshop weekly workshop or only on the weekends and if you want a course or something then go to my website or theartclasses.com and you see what I'm having a group class or one-on-one -on -one, doesn't matter which one drawing or painting now I make a selection and making the last thing the moon uh, making a last selection of this, the circular shape right um, and then I'm just using the light which is the color of the light orange and then the shadow which is the color of the blue that you have the shadow now I'm going to layer new adjustment color balance and I'm just gonna tweak the color a bit make it a bit more blue uh, no I don't want that yeah that's probably be more like it kind of like blue and orange so it's become uh, a little more soothing rather than have too many colors um, all right so this is it well thank you for watching and if you want to take class go to my website and if you want um, a chance to get pin over and critique uh, just go my go to my patreon and um, just pledge uh, all level of the patreon you post some artwork you get a chance to get a pen over and critique and you also get tutorial also um, and uh, I do live stream Monday Wednesday Friday at 12 p.m. Uh, Pacific time zone and Tuesday and Thursday at night 9 p.m. at night and you can go to my Twitter then pick select the topic because I usually put the poll up there uh, on a daily basis alright guys 